Director General, Voice of Nigeria, Osita Okechuku, has appealed to the APC Governor to urgently align with President Muhammad Buhari to liberate democratic institutions at the state level. And that truism is that Nigeria cannot claim to be in democracy when democracy at the subnational is under lock and key. Osita said this during the APC Press Corps' second annual public summit, titled APC Beyond 2023, the task ahead, the role of stakeholders. Ours is not about who is who. Ours is about ensuring that beyond 2023, APC stands. That is our dream and that's our vision. It's on this note, having said this, ladies and gentlemen, my job is simple. My job is just to welcome you and wish you happy stay. It's our prayer that when next we call you, you'll be there for us. On behalf of the executive members and members of APC Press Corps, I welcome you all. Thank you very much. God bless you all. It's going to repeat itself unless the APC undertakes self-censorship. You are going to, the National Working Committee has to ensure it's done. Why you are going to do so is that the history of the Nigerian elections has shown that those who impose candidates when they became governor they become their enemy so if if the man you are imposing will be your enemy tomorrow why impose him in my state some people nearly killed themselves in 1999 and one of the godfathers produced a governor he didn't take time they quarreled when the governor finished and also imposed somebody it didn't take time they quarreled. If that is the history of, the, of uh, our election, ladies and gentlemen, why impose candidates? Thank you for listening. Permit also allow all chairmanship aspirants to tell all the party members their plans for the post of chairmanship. The chairmanship aspirant, al Sane Musa, said, if he emerges as the APC national chairman, he will put food on the table of Nigerians. He will be a leader that will be decisive and not compromise the office. Also, the second national chairmanship aspirant, Senator Tanko Alkura, said, if he emerges as the national chairman, he will sustain the gain and secure the future, and he will ensure the party members are rewarded. What he has for the party is restructuring the party to be democratic and also ensure reward system for all those who are committed and loyal members of the party. He will ensure that the party is ICT compliant, both at the Secretariat and also in the state. He is a consummate progressive by choice and a passionate patriot by conviction. And as you all know, like we've said, when he becomes the national chairman of our party, Our campaign or his campaign is predicated on a distinct cash phase that encapsulates all we plan to do, and this is doing it differently. His plan will introduce a new lease of life to party administration based on his experience at the national level in political party administration. He will combine the experience of party administration with the strength of his bridge between the older and young, younger generation of party supporters to run a structure that will work for all regardless of status, of age, and gender. Yes, the People Democratic Party is celebrating having a 25-year-old youth leader, 
But our party can go a step further by having a youthful yet experienced bridge builder as its national chairman that is doing things differently. <laughs> doing things differently also means having a functional new media directorate at the APC Secretariat. I think that should interest our media people here. Under Salih Mustafa APC National Working Committee, we continue its approach to politics and have a defined political culture that will have profound impact on the country's development, just like President Muhammad Buhari is putting in place. So you can see, it will be a disservice for someone who has participated. I'm happy my chairman is here. It was with him we started to drive the process as governors to ensure that this party was chaperoned into a successful measure. The other person was Fayemi. The three of us, amongst all the governors, were the ones that drove the process. So it would be disservice for any one of us. I wish uh, Fayemi is not a governor. He would have been part and parcel of people participating so that we can add value to something that we have failed to nurture at the very infancy stage. I'm also happy that critical patriotic members of the party are here. My brother, Senator Sani Musa, he has been a wonderful senator in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And for him to part, uh, take interest in adding value to the party, I think we should be happy that the party is being uh, uh, taken care of by people that are supposed to take care of it. There are my colleagues, uh, Modi Sharif, uh, his Excellency is a good amongst others. This to me is a sign of good omen that a lot of people are wishing to come and participate and add value to the party. I wish that before the convention we have much more than what we have now so that we'll be able to sieve the grains from the chaff. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. In conclusion, the moderator has told you about my trajectory in the Nigerian politics. I think I was born into politics because right from when I was in my impressionable age as an adolescent, I was a youth leader way back in 1979 in the all MPN. I became national secretary. I became member of the Constituent Assembly 88, 89. I became governor for eight years. And now, by the special grace of God, the Senate of the Republic of Nigeria, I believe this antecedents would have prepared me to take the leadership of this party to the next level. And I, and I believe through this trajectory, I've come across different people within the party. And if I'm given the opportunity to preside over the leadership of this party, I have known quite a number of people that belong to this party. And I have known the contributions the challenges, the sacrifices people have been able to make over this period of time. I think there couldn't be a better way to get this party properly positioned more than someone that has been with the party right from the beginning and has gone across the board to know what needs to be done and what not needs to be done, especially <laughs> now. So Chief Sonny Monidafe said, APC will be run like a business, and the party will be allowed to screen candidates. When Malam Salio Mustafa, also an aspirant, said he will restructure the party to be democratic and create a reward system for those who are members of the party and adopt democracy diplomacy. However, the fifth aspirant, Abdulaziz, said if he emerges as the APC national chairman, he will ensure positive rebranding of the party and will ensure the principle of the party supremacy be adhered to. And it will create a quality reward system for members of the party. The internal structure needs to be re engineered. We need to re engineer APC. We need a leadership that is participatory. We need a leadership that is press setting. We need people with ideas to come in. Today, in this country, if you look at the generation we have, from 18 to 27 are the majority. 
what do you have in pack for them? Are we going to continue with the status quo? I'm believing that once it is done, or if I'm anointed to be there, I will be the one to dictate the tunes? No, it cannot work anymore. We need to wake up to what Nigerians need. We need to put food on the table of Nigerians. This present administration has started building an ideology for the political party we are running. That is the APC. Mr. President, everybody can attest to the fact that he's honest, very dedicated, committed, and patriotic to this country. So we need leaders that will follow suit. And the legacies that APC are putting should not be allowed to be destroyed by anyone. And as such, you need a party that is very strong, a leader that will be able to be decisive, a leader that will not compromise the office, a leader that does not look at worldly things to think that is the best way to go. And that is me for you. When I said I will be adaptive to participatory and affirmative work style that will usher visionary and persistent leadership of this country, I mean of this party, what I mean by that is that MPC must be an institution, which is the only antidote to reckless this abuse of office and ethics which bring about disharmony and wrangling. We must bring reform, and that form of reform that we are going to bring is through reconciliation through reorganization and the redirection of our manifesto. We must build a manifesto that will go in line. We must domesticate our politics. Democracy is borrowed, but we must also use this democracy as a platform to domesticate what we have that will usher in good economy for us, usher in a generation that is thinking ahead. Why is China ahead of everywhere? because they built from foundation. There is need for APC to showcase this, and the only way we can do it is through leadership. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we have more to offer this country. And if we are given the opportunity to run this party, if I'm leading the National Working Committee of this party, what I will abide by, I will try as much as possible to be inclusive I will give inclusive leadership where everyone will be allowed to do his job. If you are the publicity secretary, we will ask you, why is it that we are not seeing any work? If you are in charge of media, it is your responsibility to sell the APC. If you are the secretary of the party, it is your responsibility to keep the data of the party. So as a chairman, we oversee that and see how it works for this country. My leader, Senator Mbakura mentioned earlier, that we must put forward the gains that this president has been able to record for our dear nation in the last six years. It is essential that we properly document and disseminate to Nigerians and to the whole world about the landmark achievements of this government. If you leave Abuja today going to my state, Benue, you will see the dualization that is right now ongoing at a very fast pace. I was a minister under the government of PDP before I migrated to join the APC. The reason was that in the PDP, there was no democratic environment despite the name of the party. Today in the APC, I have come and I'm enjoying the freedom of democracy. The East-West Route, which was under the Ministry of Niger Delta and I had the opportunity to supervise, is still ongoing. That project, the cost has been reviewed over the years and is getting to the trillion naira mark. Today we have the dualization that is going from here to Benue. If not for the pandemic lockdown, I believe that that road would have been completed. With due respect to my dear friends that have not done this, I believe they are very busy. As the national chairman by God's grace will swear in the caucus immediately, 
We will have elders committees in all the states. We will not allow a situation where our states will go into crisis, go into congresses with crisis. With due respect to my dear brother, uh, Senator Yari, what's happening in Safari will never happen under my watch. We must resolve the problems. What is happening in um, River State, in Oshun, in Kwara State, will not happen. Problems have solutions. If you are determined to get the solutions, you will get it. Under my watch, we will do that. But I want to make one final appeal. It's not a do or die affair. Please, the APC must survive. It must survive. Nigerians pray a lot. But after praying, we tell God to step aside and to help ourselves. I mean, to use the house as saying, So why are you in a hurry? to get what we would think is good for us by hook or crook. Leave it with God. If you force it on yourself, you might regret.